Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. It's a good night to die, you know. Boy, is that a good night to die. <laughs> to yourself. Glory to God. How many of y'all know God does not communicate with yourself? <laughs> we communicate with ourselves, but God doesn't. God communicates with the, Him, Him and us. New man, new creation. Amen? Jesus is always looking for Jesus. The Lord said to me, I, I, we began to talk about something and the word capital punishment came up. I said, capital punishment? He said, people don't realize that the, the, the laws, there's, they're parallel laws. Not only what he's brought forth in this country, in the, in the world, but there's parallel laws. And there are spiritual laws. And people don't understand that capital punishment is associated with each state having their own capital punishment. Some of them still do, some of them don't. It's called the penalty of death. A person is sentenced to death. Everybody has their opinions on whether a person ought to be sentenced to death. You go back in the Old Testament and believe me, they were sentenced to death. They were stoned to death. If any child was rebellious and they gave him multiple opportunities, the family would say, you know what, it's time for you to go. And they'd bring them before the elders and they'd bring them before the congregation. They would stone the kid to death. If somebody got in, caught in fornication, they were pulled out and stoned to death. Do you remember the woman that ran to Jesus? Help. Because they were getting ready to stone her to death. She was a harlot. Amen. And she ran to Jesus and Jesus stopped everyone from stoning her. But she came to him running for help. Does everybody understand that? A Savior had come to rescue us from the sentence of death. And he says, if you have not sinned, then you can throw the first stone. But he came to take away our sins that we wouldn't be stoned or sentenced to death. But there still is capital punishment in the spirit realm, in the eternal kingdom of God, and in the physical realm. Spiritual capital punishment. So God is bringing us, he's bringing the body up to a higher standard right now. And again, like I said, today is determined by each state to enforce the death penalty. And there's, there are differences, you know. There's a difference between someone killing someone and murdering someone. When you, a person kills someone, it's usually in self-defense. When someone murders someone, there's a, uh, an emotive, an intention, either through jealousy, rage, or gain, or whatever it is. You know, some people believe in life sentences. I was sentenced to life. I don't believe in it. I don't believe people ought to get sentenced to life for drugs. I don't, be, I don't believe people ought to get sentenced for life for robberies and stuff like that. But if somebody kills someone, they ought to be shot and killed themselves. There ought to be a death penalty for that. Why waste them in life in prison? Now, if somebody's under the influence, it's a different story. There's different penalties. But if somebody's out for murdering to gain, that's a whole different thing. We're wasting a lot of time and a lot of money. Now, but before they execute them, they ought to give them two years in prison. Aren't you glad I'm not the president? So they got an opportunity to turn their life around before they get executed. But anyone who rapes an individual ought to be executed. But give them two years in prison, give them an opportunity to turn their lives over to Christ. At least they're going home. Amen. But anyways, that's just my personal opinion. I've got many of them. <laughs> Go to Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. One of the things that he brought to my attention, he said, do you know that if you live in the flesh, you are sentenced to death. 
He says, my people don't get it. He said, if you live in the flesh, you are sentenced to death. You are under the capital punishment of the eternal counsel of the Lord by living in the flesh. Think about that. So when you and I were living in the flesh, you and I were sentenced to death. No rescue. No one to help except for Jesus waiting for you to repent and turn from it. So if you died in that condition, just think about it. If you overdosed and you died, you'd go to hell. That's the main thing. Does everybody understand? Now, I'm not the final judge. He is. But I'm telling you what the Word of God says. Now, God knows everybody's circumstance, doesn't he? Amen? If you get hit by a car and you die and you're unsaved, where do you go? If you're living a life of the flesh, you're going to hell. That's what he says. You are, that's capital punishment. We took a lot of chances, didn't we? Man, I'm telling you, every time I used to get high, I would say, God, if I die, take me home. And you used to say, no, I can't. I knew I was playing roulette. Never knowing if I was going to die, if this was my last high, if this was it. Or if I was high out there and getting hit by a car. Or drug robbery or drug, drug shootout or something like that. He just didn't know. Until the Lord began to reveal to me, he said, then he began to bring it to me before I got saved. You're killing a lot of people. And he began to show me how many people I killed, how many families I destroyed. I didn't go out and kill them. Just by buying the dope and reselling it was killing somebody. And all of their blood was on my hands. And he began to show me all of this blood on my hands because of my use of addiction, alcohol, no matter what it was. It was on my hands. You got somebody pregnant and they had an abortion, that blood, that child's on your blood on your hands. Does everybody understand this? See, this is a reality check right now. But thank God for Jesus that you go to him and repent and get a brand new life. Now you got to live that life. And not let the enemy bring you back into the flesh. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, is everybody there? Hallelujah. You want the truth, right? You know, the Bible says the truth sets you free. Now, you may know the truth, but not practice the truth, then you're not free. There's a lot of people that know the Word of God, can quote the Word of God, carry the Bible, go to church, and they're still doing things behind closed doors. They shouldn't be. But God knows who they are. Those are the ones that Jesus say, I don't know you, when they come before Him. In Galatians 5, verse 16, let's speak it. I say that walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so you don't do the things that you what? Wish or desire to fulfill the flesh. But if you are led by the Spirit of God, you're not under the law of sin and death. Verse, um, where am I? Verse 19, let's speak it together. For the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery. So look at, remember, we just said that if you're living a life of the flesh, if you're doing any of these things, you are sentenced to life until you turn from them. The works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, what? Uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is about drug abuse. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and anything like these, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I've told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hello. They won't get in. Like I said, God has the last say of everything, doesn't he? But I can't stand up here and tell you that well, you know, take that chance. <laughs> Don't. You'd be an idiot if you did. Let's go a little further. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, or control over self, which is flesh. Against such there is no law of what? Sin and death. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Walking and living in the Spirit of God <laughs> is a choice. But you must be baptized and filled with the Spirit of God so you have power to say yes to Him. What's he saying, man? If you walk in the flesh of the world, which is the lust of the world, you'll be under capital punishment. But if you don't walk according to the lust of the world, you won't be under capital punishment. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 16. Hallelujah. This may sound strange, title, capital punishment, <laughs> but we need to know it. What is capital punishment? The sentence of death. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Let's speak it together. Therefore, therefore what? From now on, uh-oh. <laughs> we regard no one according to the flesh. Does everybody get it? In other words, you regard no one to the flesh. In other words, you can't take what they say to be true if they're living a life of flesh. You can't trust them. So you're not regarding them as a true witness, are you? You're not regarding them as someone that can be faithful to you. No way. They'll turn on you every time. Why? They're not unplugged from the world. They're still plugged into the world. Even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciled the world to himself, and not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore <laughs> you on Christ's behalf, be what? Reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So he's saying, regard no one according to the flesh, to the, that live according to the lusts of the world, like sin, rebellion, stuff like that, fornication. We just read all of those things. Again, because they live a life of deception, they live for themselves, but we live a life for Christ. Our life is in him because he bought us with the blood of Christ. And he took us out of the powers of the hands of the darkness, the destroyer, washed us with the blood, healed us with the stripes, and gave us opportunity to be filled with the Spirit of God to say no to the powers of darkness. That's why he says, Live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. So again, when an individual turns from walking in the Spirit to walking in the flesh, that doesn't mean somebody makes a mistake, hello? You can still make a mistake and still be in the Spirit. But if you stay there, you're in trouble. Why? Because then you will come under the capital punishment again. If you break covenant with God, you come under capital punishment, and that is the penalty of death. Romans 8. And verse 12.
you know, when he says, don't regard those individuals that live that way. In other words, you can't take things to heart. Don't let your heart get connected with them. Because they'll betray you at some time. Romans 8, 12. Let's go there. Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? You will die. You'll be under what? Capital punishment. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, what? Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So capital punishment to those who live according to the flesh. But eternal life to those who live according to the spirit. Think about that. You and I were under capital punishment. We were sentenced to death until Christ made way for me and you to be rescued. Now, again, many people have turned from the spirit into the flesh. Well, I don't believe you can lose your salvation. Well, you're an idiot because you don't believe the word of God. You mean if I'm dying in that condition, I go to hell? Yes. I wouldn't take that chance, would you? Heck no. 2 Timothy 3. Now, we know that there are sick people, mental illnesses and stuff like that. God is merciful. Amen. Now, you don't go to purgatory and wait for him to decide. Amen. No such thing. I think that's like a pancake place, isn't it, or something? Hallelujah. Oh, that's Perkins. I'm sorry. I... <laughs> Perkins. That's not purgatory, I say. Second Timothy 3. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Lighten up. Sheesh. Think this is a Bible study? It's training session. Hallelujah. And we have all the info from the commander in chief to overcome every power of darkness and every attack if you're willing to cooperate. If you're not willing to cooperate, <laughs> history. Verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's speak it. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Are we in the last days? Are there perilous times? Things aren't getting easier out there. They're getting harder, man. Amen? For men will be lovers of who? Themselves. They're not able to deny themselves. Didn't Jesus request that? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow? They are unable to deny themselves. They are under capital punishment. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, un unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of God, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness. In other words, they got a good talk. But denying its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. Don't promote it. Don't associate it with it. I don't care how long you've known them. Again, individuals like in this condition. Now, you don't have to do, they don't have to do all of these things of what it says. They just have to be about one of those. Just one of them. Does everybody understand? Will be associated with a person that lives according to the flesh. They are under the judgment of God Almighty. And they are sentenced to death under capital punishment until they turn. For this are sort of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins and led away with what? Various lusts of desires. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
Now as Janus and Jebus resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Men of what? Corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. But he says, listen, you got to carefully follow my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, and long-suffering, love, and perseverance. Listen, we are in the last days. Individuals are sentenced to death, but many of them are being rescued. It's unfortunate many of them who have been living a life of eternity have turned from it, and walked away according to the flesh now. In 1 Corinthians 6. Punishment. I think they've removed the electric chair now. You know. That was pretty gruesome. Now they just overdose them. That's capital punishment. They used to execute people, shoot them, kill them, hang them. Remember there was hangings then? And if they were, if they were still doing that today, there would be a lot of, the world would be different. People would think twice about doing what <laughs> that person just did. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 7. But we know the ruler of this world is called Satan. Let's speak it together, verse 7. Now, therefore, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Wow. Why? Because they're in the flesh. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, they are put under the sentence of death. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Thank you, Jesus. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful me, for me, but I won't be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and also raised us up by his power. Praise God. They will not enter the kingdom of Christ if they're in the flesh. Capital punishment. Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah. In verse 26. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? For if we willfully, hello, you choose. If we willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, right? If we willfully sin after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, you ain't protected. If you go out and willfully sin, You're no longer under the blood. You're under capital punishment. Why? Because you're in the flesh. Amen? Now, again, I'm not saying if you make a mistake. People make a mistake. But if a person willfully <clears throat> goes out and uses dope, goes out, fornicates, willfully chooses 
after knowing the truth and protected by the blood of Jesus, they've nullified it. Why? Because they've broken covenant with God. That person is now in the flesh and under capital punishment. Does everybody understand that? It says, verse 27, but a certain fear for what? Expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counting the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. He is warning his own people about this. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Willfully sin, break covenant, receive death penalty. Hebrews 12. Twelve twenty-five. Is everybody okay? Well, nobody ran out, so we're cool. We don't need to lock any doors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse twenty-five. Let's speak it. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as things that are made. That the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. That's why you see the world's being shaken big time, all over the place. Verse 28, therefore, since we, receive, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God ex acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. See, shaking, God shaking to expose and remove and then establish the loyal and faithful. That's what's happening right now all over. And hope that people will come back to the kingdom, awaken them and shaking. Now, I want to share something, and you've heard me say this over and over and over. You and I are not saved by grace, even though we're saved by grace. What is grace? God's plan to what? Escape. So many people think, well, I'm saved by grace. In other words, it's God's unmerited favor. No, it's not. You earn God's favor. By your obedience. Remember he said, what does the word say? I am rewarded according to my integrity. To the things I do. I'm rewarded because I'm doing the right things before God. That's how you get favor from God. But you are not saved by favor. You are saved by cooperating with the word of God. That's how you and I are saved. If you're not willing to cooperate with the word of God, then you are not saved. It's amazing how many people think they're saved. They've never even read the Bible. They don't know what the heck. They just go by how they feel. They make all their decisions by how they feel. Well, they're going to be pretty upset when they get before Jesus. Amen? So that is grace. We need to put that right down right away. We are saved by cooperating with the Word of God and God's plan to escape. Escape what? The powers of darkness and the judgment of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Hebrews. We did that already, right? Good. All right, let's go a little further. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. Let's speak it together. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. Everyone say, I was foolish. 
but now I'm wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to be, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who is, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So no flesh shall glory. Amen. Works of the flesh shall glory. The Bible even tells us that if you've done the works, if you think that you are rewarded by your works in the flesh, you'll be not, you won't be rewarded. They will burn. In other words, you better know what God is telling you what to do. Ephesians 2. No flesh shall glory, but be condemned. Ephesians chapter 2. That's why the Lord says, even my own people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of truth, lack of how to fight. Verse 1, let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses, in sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind of the flesh, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Wow. But thank God. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he saved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And what's grace? God's plan. It's not somebody's name. Amen. It's God's plan to escape. And raised us together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that the ages to come he might show exceeding riches and of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by God's plan, you have been saved. Hallelujah. For once we were children of wrath, but rescued by the plan of God. Matthew 7. Aren't you glad you know the truth? Aren't you glad you're practicing the truth? Aren't you glad you're following the plan of God of escape? Think about how many people are out there that don't know the plan. There is no plan B. There's only plan A. <laughs> Matthew 7.13 Let's speak it, please. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who, found, who find it. Think about this. There, there are only two originals from the wilderness that made it to the promised land. Out of like a couple million people. That's not a very good percentage, is it? Two of the originals made it. Yow. He says, verse 15. Beware of false prophets or doctrines. There's a lot of media that are false prophets. Amen? There's a lot of medical people that are false prophets. Be, be aware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A tree is a representation of a spirit of a man. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Why? Because they're in the flesh. Therefore, by their fruits you'll know them. 
Look at 21. This is powerful. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, ooh, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not gone to your cemetery schools or seminary schools? Have we not gone to all of these things and learned stuff? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done this? Haven't we fed the poor? Haven't we? Haven't we? Yeah, we've done all these things. We've prophesied in your name. We've cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name, Lord. And then he'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. Lawlessness is of the flesh. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock, which means the anointing. That means they are willing to cooperate with the plan of God to escape. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15. In verse 50. And the Bible says in the latter days will be as though the days of Noah. When everybody will be marrying and having all kinds of good times and seem like good times, but they're all in the flesh. Noah's family was the only one that wasn't in the flesh. Everybody was in the flesh. Capital punishment, boom. They all died. They got condemned to death. In verse 50, let's speak it together, please. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is what? Sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. And verse 15. I think this scripture is so appropriate for these days. <laughs> Do not what? Do not what? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but is of the world. Who's the ruler of the earth? Satan. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Why? Because you can, can you do the will of God in the flesh? No. It's impossible. Little children is the last hour, and you've heard the Antichrist is coming. And even now, there are loads of Antichrist. It's the Antichrist spirit that is now leading people, deceiving people, and taking them out of position. And there are many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. So the anointing was going to give you power to overcome. Go to Acts chapter 1. Acts 
x1. What's the anointing again? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Acts 1 verse 4. And this is after Jesus rose from the dead. It says, and being assembled together with him, he did what? He didn't ask him. He commanded. Does everybody see that? He did what? He commanded. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He commanded them to wait to be baptized with the Holy Spirit so they would have power. So the anointing would come upon them, and they could say no to the enemy. They could cooperate with the Holy Spirit and be led by the Spirit and not live a life of flesh, but live a life in the Spirit. You can't live a life in the Spirit without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. Verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time store the kingdom of Israel? And he said, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Of course, it wasn't time for any of that. He said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. That's power. What is a witness? One who says no to evil. Amen? And expresses the character of Christ with integrity. The power of the Holy Spirit is to assist in denying yourself. Without the Holy Spirit, you are unable to deny yourself. It's impossible. And that means you're in the flesh then. And if you're in the flesh, you're under capital punishment. Psalm 149. Psalm 149. In verse 5. Remember, this is not a religious operation. It's a military operation intended by God Almighty. He is the Lord of hosts, meaning he is the Lord of the army. We need to think more military, not foo-foo. Amen? Oh, Jesus lover. Hey, there's no wrong to love Jesus. Amen? It's his love that came to me and you. But he also loves in judgment. Some people just won't. No way, I don't believe that. Jesus is just love. Well, there wouldn't be hell. Hello? He is a judge also. He's a judge of righteousness and unrighteousness. In fact, there's a sign at his throne to get in. No one comes in the flesh. Amen? And if you're not one who practices righteousness, you cannot enter. Oh, you can be as good as all you want. But goodies don't get in. Only those who practice righteousness get in. Amen? That's where people are deceived. Oh, he's a good person. Too bad. He, did he know Jesus? Well, no, but he was a good person. Well, I hope he met him halfway to hell and the Lord rescued him. This is reality. This is truth. Verse 5, let the saints be joyful in the glory. Let them sing aloud on their bed. Well, heck, man, we ain't in bed anymore. You ought to be screaming. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth. yoo -hoo! And a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the what? Written judgment. This honor have who? All the saints. Whoa. Praise the Lord. It is an honor of the saints to take dominion and execute, execute the commandments of the Lord as warriors of the Lord, as ambassadors of the Lord. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5, please. Verse 
verse 12. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. Verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's do it. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. Amen? It didn't say rejoice when you feel like it. It said rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he who calls you is faithful who will also do it. And I'm going to close it. Col uh, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And verse 16. Hallelujah. Warriors of the Most High. Thank God we are no longer under capital punishment, but the world still is. Amen. That's why we got to get the truth to them. And get them not only saved, but get them filled with the power of God. Verse 16, let's speak it together, please. Is everybody there? Okay. So let not you let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding a festival or new moon of, or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you or your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourish and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and the doctrines of men. It's amazing to me in how many places they are still now, if you don't celebrate the Sabbath on Saturday, you're going to hell. We don't serve the Sabbath. We serve the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen? These goofy man-made doctrines that Jesus fulfilled everything for me and you. The freedom is awesome. If we'll accept that freedom that God made for me and you, that we can have a personal relationship, walking heart to heart, hand to hand, and cheek to cheek with Jesus all the way home. Hearing the Spirit of God, having revelations and visitations, having dreams and visions, making it such a reality. One of the things that God always does is trying to make himself real to his people, if we'll just let him. But unfortunately, people can't wait. Oh, Lord, please answer this prayer. Never mind, I got it. They can't wait for God to move. But I'm telling you, when you learn how to allow God to move in everything, it's awesome. He makes himself so real that you can't deny it. And you get so encouraged and so filled with the Spirit. But you allow, got to allow God to move. Amen? And look at He doesn't move in our time. He moves in His time. And if you'll just allow Him to move in His time, man, you'll be encouraged all the time. Amen? Verse 23. The... Uh, these things indeed have an appearance of what? 
wisdom and self-imposed religion. Oh, snap. Have a talk about self-imposed religion. All of these robes and everything, these uh, so-called, I guess, people of false prophets and false gods. They wear all of these gorgeous things. I mean, you go into these churches, there's gold and silver everywhere. Like it means anything to God. You know? You know, he's after your heart. He wants your heart. That's what he wants. He wants you. Hallelujah. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the what? Flesh. Because no flesh shall glory. Capital punishments for all those who are walking in the flesh, live in the flesh. That means sentence of death. But thank God for Jesus, who's merciful and always waiting for us to turn. The whole thing is, is you don't know when his mercy runs out. <laughs> you just don't know. And many times people think God's mercy is going to be continuously until he says, I'm done. You've rejected me enough times. We don't know how many times that is. Only God knows. Amen? But it's the prayers of the saints that rescue individuals for God to get, to get attention to them. It's the prayers of the saints. You're praying for someone that's vitally important. You're allowing them to live longer until they can get saved. But right in, at that period, even though they're under the capital punishment, your prayers for them will delay God's punishment. But then, you still don't know. He can do whatever he wants because he's God. And we're not. Amen. Thank God we're not. There wouldn't be anything left. Hallelujah. But to God be the glory. Amen. Praise God. How many of y'all want to live in the spirit? Amen. I'm with you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we ask that you put boundaries around us and let them scream every time we get ready to move in the flesh and Walk away from the Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask that you be the leading voice of every temple here. That you'll visit people in dreams and visions and revelations. And bring reality of who you are and who we are in you. I pray blessing over each and every one and protection from the enemy in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the Lord.